Hi, I'm Scott Peterson, uh, live sound specialist, and uh, this is Eric Stallhammer, who's going to be running all of the audio here at the NAM main stage. And we're featuring right now a multi-rack native system running on Mac Mini by a Sonnet Thunderbolt using a RME HDSPE MADI card over fiber optics and a Soundcraft digital console. I took Tower of Power's input list and built a session that mirrors that input list exactly for routing and put the processors on it that I would use. I got the input list from him yep. at uh, 1230 and built this by one. And basically what's gonna happen is, is this is a template for using multi-rack native on the Soundcraft console as effectively, this is an entire effects rack for all 50 inputs, plus spatial effects, meaning two verbs and two delays, plus master two bus processing and it's completely quick and easy to get settings for all the changeover that we're going to have to deal with, or he's going to have to deal with, right. poor guy. I'll be here to help if you need it. Um, the connectivity is basically an insert path between each channel, and in this case we've got uh, two for the kick, one is for the, the actual, uh, I would call it the top, or the click channel, where in this case I have a LA3A, and this is uh, from Greg Price's playbook, Normally you'd set it at 12 and 12 and follow it with the Transex transient shaper to get snap back into it, not worrying about the, uh, the boom because you're sub-feeding an aux for the subwoofers. And you take this parameter here, the range, and just sweep it to where it's hitting the sweet spot where the subs are interacting with, in this case, an outdoor environment. But in a room, it's even more important to sweep the range to where it's loading the system properly. Sure. Then you got a click channel and a boom channel mm -hmm. and a lot of room to keep definition. Um, moving on, we have what I would choose for snare signal paths, which is an API 550 followed by an 1176 blue face. And um, since you're gonna be going through so many bands, I figured I would keep it consistent across yeah. these. That'll make it a lot easier. I did put transient shapers on the hats in case you decide to use those. Um, following that, I also used a very similar path on the racks. And this also was implemented by a lot of guys, including the front of house for Group Love and several others that I recently worked with. And it's basically a transient shaper for in really replacing an EQ. Mm -hmm followed by a simple compressor, which is designed for guitars called Renaissance Axe, but it's three parameters, threshold, attack, and output gain. And you just hit it as hard as you want to, and that's easily adjusted on the fly. For overheads, I'm taking a hybrid EQ, which I would probably stick a high pass sure. with a fairly significant slope and get up into somewhere around here to take the meat out of the snare out of your overheads. Then maybe add a little top, depending on how brassy they are. And then I'm following that with a Fairchild emulator from uh, Jack Joseph Puig's collection called the Puig Child 670. Uh, this is something I stole from One Republic's engineer. And he smashes the overheads and it sounds absolutely fantastic. Don't know if it'll work for all the bands, but it certainly will work for some. Um, the Leslie top, I'm using the hybrid compressor and this will, I don't know if you're going to have any other bands with the Leslie. Certainly. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Um, this came from Dave Morgan. And um, you'll, you've got a couple of options here. Multiple flavors of analog for the actual compression process, but you also have parallel compression built in. Cool. So if you want to use it, yeah. awesome. It's there for you. Other things we talked about for horns. I personally like API followed by 1176 on trumpets also. And I'm a trumpet player, so I tend to lean in that direction. Mm -hmm. For saxes, I really do prefer the VEQ4, which is modeled after a 1081. Follow that with an LA3A for the baritone. I think it does a little bit nicer on the low frequencies. And with the tenors, I actually am using a uh, LA2A from the Chris Lord Algae Signature Series after the 1081 emulation. For the vocals that are not the main vocalist, I'm using Renaissance Vox, which is like Axe. It's real simple, yeah. quick, nice because with the turnover, want to make sure you have an easy time of it.
Um, spare channel, obviously empty, empty. All your guest vocals are the same. And uh, your lead vocal, this is the same chain I started to use with uh, Zach Brown. And obviously his curve is gonna be different than theirs. His has some pretty significant notches where his voice is very powerful. But sure. for this, have you played with this at all? Uh, not in this application. I well, yeah, I've played with it. Oh, you have? Okay. Yeah. So you'll have a pre and a post curve RTA running in the background. Yeah. So that'll nail, let you nail some problem frequencies. And these profiles go through a number of emulations of curves and filter points. Mm -hmm. Digital two is a super notch, digital one's an asymmetrical bell, and the other ones you kind of just have to listen to, but it's yeah. pretty obvious what they are. Right. And then I'm following it with a blue face 1176, mm -hmm. which I would probably start with something like a gentle, uh, just a gentle squeeze. Yeah. And other than that, I set up a basic plate for your drums with our convolution reverb and a basic hall also with that. Um, feel free to change it out for the Renaissance reverb if you like. Right. Um, the delays that I'm using, seeing as how it's a horn band, the Kramer Master Tape makes an excellent slap delay, mm -hmm. for, especially for horns and things that are of that time period. It works great for beach music, R&B, and it's really flattering on horns. And for your vocal delay, I did a quick ping pong yeah. right between 2 and 250 milliseconds sure. so it gets out of the way quick. And um, on the master, we did C6 with a hard knee, and all you're really looking for is for this line to dance, not be smashed down, right. but for it to look like kind of like a snake in all frequencies, and again, once audio is passing through, you'll be able to tell pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Wow, gain reduction, eh? Tower power. So we've got L2 going on with uh, a pretty, pretty substantial threshold and out ceiling. That's pretty cool. It means he's squeezing it a bit. Yeah. This is my favorite signal path for the two bus, and we're using it with these guys and everybody else. Yeah. It, it sounds awesome, and it doesn't matter what desk you're on. And that's what we got. Yeah, very nice.